Hello, friends. Welcome to this reading of Dribbling Drew from David Williams' The World's Worst Children, the first book. And today I'm going to be reading Dribbling Drew to you just for your enjoyment. But what I would just like to say before we get started is that as a teacher, I cannot help myself. I have to put together some lessons around some of the language in this story, um, some synonyms, some alliteration, great content here for a lesson to help to teach you to improve your own writing. Those lessons are linked down in the description. So all we're going to do right now is just read and enjoy the story. But if you would like to improve your English writing with those lessons, please click down the into the description box and check them out. Okay, let's read Dribbling Drew. The World's Worst Children by David Williams. Dribbling Drew. Here we have a picture of Drew and a picture of his dribble of drool, a pool of his drool, and damp shoes and socks from the pool of drool. Dribbling Drew. Once upon a time, there was a boy named Drew. Drew dribbled a lot. This wasn't just normal everyday dribbling, the odd globule of gob gloop running down your chin. Oh no, this was dribbling on an industrial scale. Here was a boy who could dribble litre upon litre of dribble a day. Now you may be wondering why dribbling Drew dribbled so much. Well, it was because he was an incredibly lazy individual. If he could, he would sleep 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And as Drew snoozed, he drooled. Zzz, plop, zzz, plop, went the drool as it landed on the floor. On school mornings, the boy would have to be dragged out of bed by his feet. If he had his way, Drew would be wheeled to school every morning in his bed. And as soon as he arrived, he would go straight back to sleep. Zzz, plop, zzz, plop. Drew liked nothing more than having a nice long snooze during his lessons. He had even been known to take a sleeping bag to school. That way he could doze through every single subject. PE was a hard one to sleep through, but Drew found a way. For example, during football matches, he would ask to be in goal and then climb up on the net and have a nap. If any of the kids scored a goal, he would moan if they celebrated too loudly and woke him up. Because Drew slept through every lesson, he always found himself at the bottom of the class. When Drew snoozed in lessons, he would dribble all over his desk. Zzz, plop, zzz, plop, zzz, plop. The dribble would trickle down to the floor where a large puddle of drool would collect. If the lesson was dreaded double history, the dribble would end up as something of a pool. No one knew quite what was in Drew's dribble. It was transparent like water, but thick and sticky like glue. One time his history teacher, Miss Past, ran over to Drew's desk to shout at him for falling asleep in class again. The unfortunate lady slipped on the dribble, shot across the floor and flew straight out the window. She was found upside down in a nearby hedgerow with her tweed skirt over her head, her big frilly knickers flapping in the wind. The day our story starts, there was a school trip to the Natural History Museum. This was a wondrous place full of all sorts of treasures from moon rock to dinosaur skeletons. The museum even housed a life-size cast of a blue whale. As Drew's class pulled up outside the museum in the school coach, Mr Nummings, the science teacher, handed out his dreaded worksheets. Now listen carefully, children. On these worksheets, I want you to make a list of all the exhibits you see in the museum today. Do we have to, sir? moaned dribbling Drew, stifling a yawn. Dozing on the coach for an hour had tired the boy out and now he was ready for bed. A pool of drool had collected at his feet. Yes, Drew, we have to, yelled the teacher. And I want you to stay awake during this visit. 
Mr. Nummings turned back to the rest of the class. Now, everyone, the pupil who writes down the most exhibits will come top of the class. So keep looking and listening the whole time. Right, out you get. As they walked in through the museum's giant wooden doors, all the children marvelled at the huge skeleton of a diplodocus, which took pride of place in the great hall, but Drew simply yawned. Then he broke away from his teacher and classmates and found a nice quiet place to nap. It was on top of a glass case housing a stuffed dodo, a bird that had become extinct centuries before. No one would disturb him up there. Drew climbed up using a stuffed giraffe as a ladder. He lay down and closed his eyes. Then the boy slept and slept and slept and dribbled and dribbled and dribbled. The boy could sleep absolutely anywhere, standing up during a rock concert, hanging upside down from a tree, even on a roller coaster as everyone around him screamed. This particular day, Drew slept for so long that he was still asleep when the Natural History Museum was locked up for the night. Without anyone realising, he was still there when they all when all the lights were turned off. All night, Drew slept. And as he slept, he dribbled. Zzz, plop. Zzz, plop. Zzz, plop. Drew dribbled and dribbled and dribbled. Then he dribbled some more. The spot of drool beneath him spread into a puddle. Soon it was a lake of spittle. By dawn, Drew's sea of dribble had filled the entire Natural History Museum. In the morning, Winston, the burly security guard, arrived bright and early to unlock the doors and open the museum as he did every day. However, this was no ordinary day. The first thing Winston noticed was a transparent fluid oozing underneath the doors. That's very strange, he thought out loud. Maybe one of the daft old professors has left a tap running. Next, the security guard dipped the toe of his boot into the liquid and realised it couldn't be water from a leaky pipe. Whatever this was, it was thick and sticky. Worried that the museum might have been flooded, Winston flung open the giant wooden doors as fast as he could. Nothing could have prepared Winston for what happened next. Whoosh! A tidal wave of drool washed him clean off his feet and he found himself travelling at speed down the street. Wow! The big man screamed like a baby. Closely behind the security guard floated some of the biggest exhibits from the museum. A stuffed polar bear, the life-size cast of the blue whale, even the diplodocus skeleton. They all bobbed along the streets of London on this rushing river of dribble. Atop the glass case that housed the dodo was Drew. In all the commotion, he had finally woken up from his long sleep. As he floated down the road, the flood of his own spittle destroyed everything in its path. Cars, lorries and even buses were swept off the ground and began bobbing along on the colossal ooze of drool. Drew leapt off the glass case onto the roof of a nearby building. From that safe place, he watched more of the exhibits from the museum pass by. Giant bird's eggs, a stuffed gorilla, a model of an elephant. The boy reached into his blazer pocket. He still had the worksheet his teacher, Mr. Nummings, had given him at the start of the school trip. Drew made a note of everything he saw. Every single exhibit from the museum floated past and he wrote them all down. Mars Rock, a Neanderthal skull, a marble statue of Charles Darwin, a giant squid, a stuffed vulture, an earthquake machine, a model T-Rex. The list went on and on. A seahorse pickled in a jar, a model volcano, a fossil of a prehistoric fish, a spacesuit, a stuffed giraffe. An old lady clinging onto her shopper. Hang on, that's a real old lady. A model of a woolly mammoth. To his credit, 
dribbling Drew, spent hours listing everything he saw as the gushing river of drool swept all the museum's precious exhibits out to sea. The next day in class, Drew proudly handed in his worksheet to Mr Nummings. Aside from a few spots of dribble, it was perfect. After looking through all his pupils' work, the science teacher announced the results. I can reveal the winner with 100% is Drew, said Mr Nummings. The boy was top of the class for the very first time in his life, before he was promptly expelled. As a punishment for destroying everything in the Natural History Museum, Drew was put to work there. His job was to reassemble the Diplodocus skeleton that had been recovered from the bottom of the sea. He was not to stop until the giant jigsaw was finished. Dribbling Drew didn't get any sleep for the next 10 years. Okay, I hope that you enjoyed that story as much as I did. David Williams' stories are always so brilliant. So as I said at the beginning of the video, please check out the lessons that I have done on alliteration synonyms and vocabulary. They're all linked in the description below. And if you could please subscribe to my channel and like this video, I'd really appreciate it. It really helps me out. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you at the next story.